新来临时好同时，对我们今天呢，同样还要欢迎我们来自 Texas 中国区的秘书长胡坤来为大家做翻译，来，掌声给恭喜他。Hi Germany. I hope you can enjoy your game, win the championship.、Uh, before I didn't care about him until I lent sanity, and then what happened was the first game when I heard the interview and he said, "I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." I got really surprised because I, I also have the same belief. 我喜欢林书豪呢，是因为他说他最喜欢的圣经的话是，不但啊，不但如此，我就是在患难中也是欢欢喜喜的。因为知道患难生忍耐，老忍耐生老练，老练生盼望，盼望不至于羞耻。因为神所将赐给我们的圣灵，将神的爱浇灌在我们心里。然后他对神的信心就是没有放弃。然后神，我觉得是给他这些磨难，然后最后是要让他体会到神的大能和神的大力，而且他也很享受这个过程。因为后来神让他在 NBA 的舞台上就是大放异彩。然后就爆发了，然后就临时疯狂。其实我觉得现在他还是在疯狂中，只是人们用世世俗的标准来看的话就没有疯狂。但是我们看他 always in sanity， 因为是上帝住在他心里，不是他自己。I love Jeremy Lin because I feel like we have the same heart in another life. We might be living and working together、uh, here in China in Beijing. I really admire you because you're using basketball to do that on a bigger stage,、uh, stage that God's given you. Okay, two. 所以今天的主题跟成功相关。So what does it mean? Just think to yourself, what does it mean for you to be successful? 我希望你们花一分钟想一下，对你们自己来说，成功究竟是什么 ？So if you could map out your own life, you know, plan certain things, what would that look like? What would be a successful life to you? 如果你有能力对你的人生做一个规划，对你来说，成功的会是哪几件事儿？你的成功看起来会是什么样子的？ Uh, generally speaking, I would say there's three categories of students. 从我眼中来看，学生们分为三大类。The first is extremely driven and self-motivated. 第一类呢，他们非常尽虚心啊，自我的驱动能力极强。They have a clear vision and a clear set of goals. 他们有清晰的愿景和一些非常明确的目标。There's tremendous motivation, excitement, and passion. 他们有很多的兴奋，非常多的驱动力来推动他们不断向前。The second type is a student who feels more lost and hopeless. 第二类的同学呢，他们在这个过程中有点迷失。They don't really know what they're doing with their life, where they're headed, or why they even exist. 他们不确定他们人生将指望何方，他们来这是干什么的，甚至不明白他们为什么要来到这个世界。So I'd say they lack real purpose. 所以我觉得他们缺乏了使命感。And then the last group is in between,、uh, in between being lost and in between being driven. 而最后一一组学生呢，就是在这两者之间，他既没有明确方向，也并不是迷失。These are the ones who are just kind of going with the flow, taking life one day at a time.、Uh, basically, wherever life leads them, that's where they're going to go. 这类学生呢，就在随波逐流，随着人生带他们去往哪处，他们就跟往哪处。I would argue that every single person here falls into one and maybe two of these categories. From my eyes, look, all of the students are certainly in these two categories. You have a dream or a vision of who you want to become, but you don't really have a deep purpose as to why you want to do that. So you have a vision that says, "This is what I want to become, or this is what I want to do." But in reality, you don't really know why you want to do that. So my question to you is, which group do you fall into? So my question to you is, which group do you fall into? So my question to you is. Which group do you fall into? So my question is, do you think you belong to which group? 
What is your definition of success? And one thing that I would say to you guys is you guys really need to know the answer to this question. Because tomorrow isn't guaranteed for anybody. And I believe each person deep down really wants to live a successful and meaningful life. So how many people last year followed the Lakers? So <laughs> <laughs> right. how many games did we win? <laughs> yeah, not that many. <laughs> so this past season was a very difficult year for me personally. Before we define what success is, let's talk about two definitions or two versions of what I would consider false success. And no disrespect towards anybody, but these versions of success come from society as a whole. So an easy way to figure out what society, society's version of success is. So you look at advertisements, music, movies, relationships, how people spend their time, their money. So you look at advertisements, music, movies, relationships, how um, the basic model is you work hard. You build your personal empire. And then you achieve your ultimate goal and only then do you find true happiness. So in high school for you guys you probably wanted the best grades to get to the best college. In college, you want to get the best internship, you get the best degree, the best honors, um, and you hopefully get the best job. And when you get that job, you want the best performance, the best promotion to get the most money. And from there, you want to be the best in your field, whether you're a CEO, a salesman, an engineer, a doctor. And eventually you try to get the best car, the best house, the best gadgets. And you want to get the best spouse, the best wife or husband, and you want to start the best family, the best kids. And then what? You want more. You want your kids to get into the best high school to get the best grades, the best college. <laughs> See, society says that this successful cycle of success is, you know, this never ending, ongoing thing. See, no matter how much you have, it won't give you the happiness, the purpose, or the peace that you're looking for. And if you aren't those three things, then are you really successful? So an easy way to really have a litmus test is to take a look at the top people. The ones whose society says are the most successful. So let's start with the most successful students. Apparently you guys are the Harvard of China, so I would say you're doing pretty well for yourselves. And so now that you guys have made it to Beida, one of the best colleges, is that enough? No, right? Most of you are probably, most if not all, are probably on to the next thing, the next goal. So 
See, as great as you were in high school, you still have something further, you still have something more, and the journey is going to continue, the goals will keep coming. So, or you can take a look at my life. In the U.S., I went to the best university, and in my opinion, I have the best job, my dream job. But I was miserable my first year in the NBA because I never got to play. See, I wanted to be a good player so badly. I used to always tell myself, if only I could play every night, if only I could be a starter, if only I could be like this player, if only I could be like that player, I would be happy. And I got my wish in New York on February 4th, 2012. And that's when everything exploded and I became known as Insanity. So after Insanity, you would think I'm very happy, I'm very fulfilled. I was on the cover of Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, I was all over ESPN, we were winning games left and right, there was endorsement deals coming at me from everywhere. I was the most popular person on the planet, the number one searched person on the planet, I was worshipped by everybody. <laughs> and in the beginning, the first two weeks, I was smiling all day, like this. <laughs> but then it gradually faded away. Five weeks later, uh, March 11, 2012, I wrote in my journal. <laughs> That's okay. I'm slowly losing my happiness, too focused on getting good stats, winning games, and living up to insanity. I just need to play for God and not put pressure on myself to play for everybody else. See, during those five weeks, there was a change in heart. And uh, I ended up, you know, going from playing for God to trying to be this phenomenon that everybody else made me out to be. See, the point is, I, re I re achieved what I thought was my ultimate goal, and less than a month, or maybe a little over a month later, I had already replaced that with another goal. Think about how crazy that is. I'm in the middle of one of the most miraculous, if not the most miraculous season in the NBA, and I'm sitting here thinking and writing these thoughts. What about Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time? How many championships has he won? There we go, six. Good job. Alright, so on June 14th, two weeks ago, he said, I'm going to read it directly, I want to win another championship as an owner. I know it's a lot harder, but when, it's ha when it happens, it's going to be just as good. See, even Michael Jordan, the epitome of success, is still chasing more. 
。所以大家看看，就像 Michael 这样这么优秀的篮球运动员，他都是成功的定义者，他仍然在追逐下一个成功。And that's why my point here is that the first version of success that society gives us is false, false success. 所以在这边，我想跟大家说说的一句话就是说，我们看到的第一种成功，其实是社会给我们成功的定义。My point isn't to stop working hard or to stop chasing your dreams. 我并不是叫大家停止努力工作或不再追逐自己的梦想。The key to success lies in your motivation, which I'll get into a little later. 是我认为成功的最重要的那个点是你的起心，我待会会详细跟大家讲。The second type of false success that society gives us is Being a good person. So, another type of society will give us a wrong definition of success: is to be a good person. You know, basically, if you follow the rules, you give to the poor, you're a good person. Good things will come your way. You'll get you what you want. You'll have a good life. So, you just want to follow the rules, and then do what you should do. Every day, you give to the poor, you're a good person. You'll get you what you want. You'll have a good life. So, you just want to follow the rules, and then do what you should do. Every day, you Season, I did all the right things. I would say I was a pretty good person. So, in the past, in this season, I believe I did the right things. I was a good person. I lived a faithful life. I read my Bible every day. I prayed multiple times a day. I went to church every day. I prayed multiple times a day. I went to church every day. I had a good attitude at work. I didn't complain to the media. I treated people the right way. I went to church every day. I prayed multiple times a day. I went to church every day. I prayed multiple times a day. I went to church every day. I prayed multiple times a day. But as we discussed earlier, nothing went as planned. 但是下你们知道，这个并没有对我们成绩有任何正面的影响。Through the first five games, we were 0 and 5. 所以说，头五场是零比五。After 20 games, I was benched. 啊，在二十场之后，我开始觉得不对了。We finished the season 21 and 61, and we set the franchise record for the worst record. 所以我们最后，呃，那个赛季结束，我们是二十一比六十一，是呃这个球球队有史以来最糟的一个季度。And not only that, now I'm going into uh, a summer of free agency, which you know you usually don't want to go into after a disappointing year. So, so in this summer, I'm going to enter into a free agency. Usually, after a disappointing year, I don't want to go into this this position. I know I say it with a smile, but kind of. I know. 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 I But what happened if I told you that I felt like this past season was a success? See, the problem so far is that I keep trying to define success with me. So, to now, I'm still trying to define success for me. My dreams, my goals, my season. My dreams. 我的目标，我的球球技。But what I've been learning is that the key to real success is knowing it's not just about me. 所以后来我发现，其实成功的定义并不在于我个人。It's about something much bigger. 而是为了一个更大的一件事情。See, I had this past season really challenged me to redefine success. 所以过去这个赛季呢，迫使我不断的重新思考成功成功究竟是什么。And believe me, this lesson was very humbling, very, very difficult at times, and it's still an ongoing lesson. So, I believe this process was very painful, but it is still ongoing. This past season was one of, if not the toughest years I've ever had. But this experience made me more close to God, more close to my family, more close to my friends. And I think that as I grow closer to Christ, my understanding of success grows as well. So, I found. Sometimes you have to lose something to really see and appreciate what you really have. 有时候呢，你必须要失去失去点什么，才能珍惜你手上现在所拥有的。So, for example, I'll show you guys. I hurt my elbow, and it's pretty swollen right now. 所以，我给你们看一看，我的手肘是肿起来的，之前撞到了。And I could sit here and say, "Man, my elbow has been hurt for two weeks." So I can sit here and say, "Oh, my elbow has been hurt for two weeks." And that's what we would normally say. This is what the majority of people would say. But no one would be like, "Hey, well, it's okay for you to be hurt because elbow, you've been healthy for 26 years, six months, and 13 days." So, actually, another angle to look at is, you see, you have been hurt today, but you've been healthy for 26 years, six months, and 13 days. Right? So sometimes when you injure your left knee, you realize, "Hey, right knee, thank you for." 
所以有时候当你的左膝受伤，你会说啊，感谢你右膝一直没有受伤，一直在支撑着我。Or sometimes when a loved one passes away, you learn to cherish your relationships more. 有时候你爱的人其实因为去世了，你会更加珍惜现在还在世的机会。See the last three years, I lost a lot. 说在过去三年我失去了很多。Since the insanity, I've lost my starting spot, and I continue to lose stats every season. 所以说，在林旋风过去之后呢，我失去了首发的位置，而且每年我的数据都还在下降。My popularity was once at the top of the world, and I've lost more every single year. 所以我的知名度曾经是全球最高，但是每一年我都在失去这个。Endorsements, market value, worldly success, these have all declined. 啊，我的赞助商啊，我对他们的价值呢，都在不断的下降中。And it culminated on January 23rd when we played the San Antonio Spurs. 在一月二十三号。It was the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. So this is the first time in three years that I was completely healthy, but I didn't get into the game. The next day, when I got back to LA, I was hanging out with my family and my friends. And I remember just crying my eyes out. It wasn't like a, you know, like it was like a, like that, you know. Um, and I, I haven't, I haven't been cried in probably like three years. And it was one of the saddest moments I've ever had. But basically because I felt like I had done so much to achieve so much, and all of a sudden, three years later, I'm back down to ground zero. But as I said earlier, sometimes you have to lose something to see what you really have. See, losing all this worldly success, you know, the things I mentioned, stats, playing time, all that, really allowed me to see God more clearly. And if there's anything I've really learned from being at the top and feeling like I'm on, at the bottom, is that there's much more to life than just worldly success. So in this, uh, the process of falling down and falling down, 发现其实人生呢，啊，的成功定义远比这个换钱要多高。The closer I am to Jesus, the more joy, purpose, and peace I have. 我越是接近主，越感觉到安宁、快乐、平静。And that's regardless of the circumstances. That's regardless of what's going on at the time. 而这个呢，跟我人生中其他发生的事情是完全无关的。呃 ，Who here does weightlifting? 在座有谁是做举重的，玩举重的？ Wow, nobody? Oh, okay, I see one in the back. All right, you guys make sure to exercise every day, okay? <laughs> um, in weightlifting, your muscles can only grow after the initial pain of working out. See, only after it's broken down and you rip holes in your muscle do you allow it to grow back and to grow bigger. Pain is a catalyst for growth. Similarly, this, this past season was very painful, but through it, I'm growing as a person. And God taught me and is continually teaching me what true strength is. And that true success lies in Him. So I'm constantly from the Lord learning what true strength is, what true success is, what true strength is. See, success isn't being isn't based on being a great basketball player or a lawyer or a doctor or any other occupation. So success isn't based on being a great basketball player or a lawyer or a doctor or any other occupation. So success isn't based on being a great basketball player or a lawyer or a doctor or any other occupation. So success isn't based on being a great basketball player or a lawyer or a doctor or any other occupation. 说我的工作职责描述了我是谁，但它并不定义我是谁。
Success is knowing that even if I lost my job or if you fail in a startup or if you take a less lucrative career path. My identity, your identity as a person is already set. Success isn't how great I perform. It's not winning a championship every year. It's not you guys getting a 4.0 or building your personal empire. Success to me is doing my best to glorify God with what He gives me, wherever He puts me. See, I don't have the most talent and I don't have the best season. But I gave everything to please God by daily showing up to work with the right attitude. I tried to play basketball the right way, play unselfishly. I tried to care for my teammates on and off the court. And I think that's success. See, earlier I mentioned the very first type of student, the one who's extremely driven. And it's okay to be driven, but you need to know why. I never wavered in my dream of becoming a great basketball player. In fact, right after this, I'm going to go with my trainer and I'm going to train, and I'm very motivated to become as great of a player as I can be. But somewhere along the road, my motivation changed. I realized being a great basketball player just to be the best in your field is empty and it's a never ending chase. See, now I strive to be a better player by glorifying God through my basketball. <laughs> I want to expand my platform, you know, my popularity or whatever, to promote the values that I believe in to more and more people. I want to use my relationship to serve relationships to serve other people. I want to grow my foundation as big as it can to help and serve as many underprivileged children as I can. And this type of living is much more liberating than a laundry list of goals. See, success to me is even being here and speaking to you guys, possibly influencing one of you guys to go out and drastically change the world. And that might be bigger than anything I ever did on the court. But even if that didn't happen, today, me speaking here is still a success because success isn't always tied to the result. Success isn't about having to be perfect or knowing exactly where you're headed in life all the time. Because honestly, you never know what tomorrow brings. Life is fragile and unexpected things happen all the time. Maybe a tragedy disables you from being able to pay your tuition. 
And obviously, I hope this doesn't happen, but someone here might get in a car accident on their way home. Someone might get diagnosed with terminal cancer tomorrow. I don't know why we're laughing. <laughs> and there will be a time in everybody's life where you feel lost and hopeless, like the second type of student that I described earlier. So keep searching, keep exploring what true purpose and what real success looks like for you. When I graduated from Harvard, I applied to zero jobs except the MBA draft. I probably wasn't the wisest decision, it didn't really make sense, but after all, nothing about my life and my story really makes sense. See, but God's plan for me was to stop me. He called me to play basketball, He gave me a desire to love the game, He gave me the talent to play the game. He prepared the way by open, opening seemingly impossible doors. Um, he's constantly shown me that he has a perfect plan for me no matter how bleak the situation looks. He was my life GPS when I was very lost. So if you feel lost, I can't give each one of you the specific answer you're looking for. But I know that when I felt lost, God gave me the direction and the meaning that I needed. Success isn't solely tied to getting to your desired destination or achieving your ultimate goal. It might be reaching out to that one classmate who seems very alienated from everybody else. It might be loving society's mar marginalized, whether it's orphans, migrant families, the homeless. Or maybe it's using your future company to better society, even if it doesn't mean the most net revenue for you. Success is finding deeper purpose in knowing why you want to do what you do. And that leads me to the third type of student that I discussed earlier, the one that's just casually goes through life. We all have only one life to live, how do you want to spend it? Don't nonchalantly go through the motions. Um, I would suggest you to be proactive, intentional, and introspective. Maybe being a doctor or creating the next big startup isn't about the biggest paycheck. Maybe it's about finding purpose and using your skills to really love, to serve, and to save lives. Or maybe in seeking the true uh, you know, answer to success for you is that you make a big change in your life. Maybe you quit studying engineering just because somebody, maybe your parents or somebody told you to be an engineer. I would suggest pursuing a deeper passion. Maybe you can go the unconventional path of being a musician. Or whatever it is that you love doing. 
there may be less job security, there may be less of an income, but I think, you know, in this example, success would be using your music to encourage the world. Don't be afraid to dream and to dream big. I think God put those desires in your heart and He made you who you are. And when you figure it out, you'll be successful. Maybe not in the way the world says, but you'll find a deeper purpose. And when I devoted my life to Christ, it did not mean that my life automatically became very easy and prosperous. Otherwise, this past season would have gone much differently. Obstacles will come and they'll feel insurmountable at times. See, even as successful as all of you guys are, there will come a time when you feel very powerless, confused, and unsure of what's going on. And that's what happened to me this past year. I felt powerless on so many different nights. And I would spend time in prayer on the car ride home, on the team plane, in the locker room, in my bed. And God didn't give us a 10 game winning streak. But He gave me something better because He gave me the comfort and the peace and the hope that I needed every single time I prayed. He reminded me that His ways are above mine and that He won't ever leave me. And I think there's power and beauty in that because he's bigger than anything life can throw your way. And that's why even though this past season it didn't really go that well from a you know worldly success standpoint. I can still sit here in front of you guys or stand here in front of you guys joyfully. Um, talking about how much peace, peace and purpose I live every day with. And I think there's tremendous freedom in knowing that your worth doesn't lie in your most recent test score or um, your ranking in your field or your bank account. You can be free from the jealousy, the insecurity, the pressures of trying to live up to yours or someone else's expectations. So, in conclusion, I would, uh, my advice to you guys is to find out what you're passionate about. Find out what talents you have and pursue your dreams with reckless abandon. But realize life is much bigger than yourself. You guys are China's most talented students. You have the chance to create significant impact to challenge wrong ideologies. You can influence the next generation. You can use your work to break down social barriers with love. And you can spread God's love to the people around you. Use your life to live for something bigger and something greater. And then no matter what you do, you'll be successful. Thanks for having me. Thank you.
前，我准备了一个问题，是我替我的队友问的，是因为北京大学男子篮球队之后会有很多球员毕业去打职业篮球，所以我想问，呃，舒豪哥，就是学生球员转型到职业球员需要注意什么，需要准备什么？但是听完演讲之后，我想我已经知道答案了，所以，所以我现在问的问题是，其实跟大家有关，就是我想问舒豪在。哈佛期间就怎样去平衡学习跟体育锻炼？我这里不说篮球，是因为大家有有的就不只是打篮球，还有踢足球什么的，对吧？所以就是这个问题。我觉得最重要就是你需要知道，呃，什么时候有很大的考试或者是，<笑>是然后我从小我妈妈爸爸都教我，就是如果我没有做完的功课，我不能打篮球。啊，然后如果我的成绩不好，那他们就不会让我在那个篮球队上。啊，所以我每年都需要拿差不多就是 straight days， 啊，或者我不能打篮球。呃、啊，所以从小我就习惯了，呃、啊，每次上完学校就，呃、啊，很快的做完的功课，所以我可以继续打篮球。嗯、啊、，so this part I'll use. Um, I think the key is just to really find balance in what you're doing, and to never really overload yourself、um, on any given time or any given period. Just like you know, the fans here expect you very a lot. We always thought or we always think that you could be a great player, or actually you could be aggressive, or you could be a leadership in your team. But what is it that exactly stops you from being a superstar or is being a leadership? So this is my question. 现场的球迷心目中都是很伟大一个领袖，也是很伟大英雄。我想知道，就是有哪些事情会阻止你成为这样子的领袖和英雄？呃，这是一个很好的问题。Well, first things first. 第一就是。Uh, I really do want to become a great player, and I believe that I put in everything I can、um, to really think about it. Me and my trainer,、um, we do a lot of work and understanding about my game and who I am and how I can be the best player I I,、uh, I can be. 所以说呢，我很努力的去成为一个好的运动员。然后呢，我每天都会跟我的培训师、训练师一起去讨论，我怎么能在下一场。比赛更好的去把它变成一个我们赛场发挥的比赛，能让我在里面发挥更好。每一天我在思考，我怎么让自己进步啊，再进步一点，变得更好。But having said that,、um, I definitely have、uh, weaknesses and areas of improvement, and I think、um, you know some of the things that you mentioned and staying aggressive consistently, and、um, you know those are important things. And I also think another side of the story is that there are definitely.、Um, Other factors that really influence or facilitate a player's success. Lee Jun Hao, I love you. Wow, I just have one question to ask. When the game is over, can you sign my autograph here? Yeah, uh, here I can sign. But thank you. Thank you. Do you have other questions? I think I had a great experience in terms of learning from Kobe.、Um, he works very hard. He takes care of his body. He watches a lot of film.、Um, he's very mechanical about how he approaches the game, and I think I definitely learned that from. I definitely picked up on some of that stuff from him. 
为现在像那个李书豪有没有豪哥有没有考虑过去小牛队？因为那里有你的好基友啊。好基友。你的好基友田德勒帕森斯。Yeah, your girlfriend, uh, Parsons. 你们你们都要我加盟小牛队，你你们都觉得这样很帅，对不对？啊。不不止，而且还还有那个泰森田德勒以前和你打打开。的时候，呃，打得很好。然后我想，另外一个问题就是，如果给一个挡拆，呃，挡拆体系的球队的话，你们信心再回到零巅峰，呃，那个零峰狂的时代？不是，呃，因为现在太早，我是需要看像 Rondo、Dragic 这些控球后卫他们，呃，加盟哪一些队，呃，然后我知道，我才会知道我的选择是什么，啊、呃，呃，然后你第二个问题。啊、uh, ，如果可以有我自己的队友，然后我我可以我也可以选教练吗？啊<笑>、uh, ，我觉得 ，I mean, I'll use English. Honestly, I'm gonna keep working and believing that the best is yet to come. 在过去的一个赛季，可能对你来说不是很那么美妙的一个赛季，还有去年季后赛零点九秒的那个失利。那么，对于那些不好的留言，你是会关注吗？或者说，对你会有什么样的影响？ I think going back to my example of weightlifting,、um, I think those really tough situations, in many ways, are like life-defining moments for me. The thing that I realize is,、um, you know, there are different levels or different accomplishments that I've had in my life, and when I look back, for every level of accomplishment. I realized I wouldn't have been able to appreciate or handle or even get there without having to go through a very tough situation right before. 在过去我成功的经历中呢，我发现一点，就是每次在成功之前，我都经历了足够的历练，他们让我拥有这个啊处理这个成功和去面对这个成功的能力。所以我觉得每一次历练都是有意义的。And I think right now, if you look at my career, obviously I'm in a very tough situation and、um, things aren't going well. But、um, I think, I, like I kind of shared earlier, this is a great time of growth for me, and I believe that you know I'm on the right path. I believe that the things that I'm doing, the things that I'm caring about, how I'm spending my time and my energy, I think these will all、um, reap a, a, a certain benefit in the future. 所以，就像你们看到，现在我并不是一个很美妙的赛季，但是我相信这个过程也是我在成长的一个过程。我相信这段经历会为我准备好更大的事情，啊、呃，以及更好的事情。一个很好的机会，然后，呃，那个结果不是我想象的。然后，就是时候我去了，我先去纽约的时候，他们已经有三四个控球后卫，可是，啊、呃，上帝就是 created， you know。Injuries and、um, different things, and just created a path for、um, success from a basketball standpoint. So it's I'm not as worried、um, as people might think I am about my future. Oh, Harden and、uh, Howard and Kobe. Which、uh, you 最喜欢和哪个球员打球？我们每一个球员都学不同的东西。啊，我觉得每一个都就是帮助我很多。如果我从一个篮球呃篮球的方面看，我觉得我的呃篮球的球风就是最像 James Harden 啊、呃，所以我从他可以学很多，因为他很喜欢打 pick and roll 啊，我也喜欢打 pick and roll， 他也有一个很大的 beard 不能长，所以我呃 I'm inspired by his beard。You in person here, and you know I only see you usually through Wong Fu clips or on highlights, and just to get a sliver of how crazy you know like your life must be,、um, and the influence that you get to have with you know some of the greatest players in the world, you know half of the year, and then coming here and getting to talk to people of all walks of life halfway around the world, and、um, yeah, and I just want to say that we're you know we're praying for you too. How can you pray for me? Just is this Asian, just is very long, and. 啊，我会
非常的有时候会非常累，所以希望可以就是健康，然后呃不太累啊、呃，然后可以我知道每天会非常忙，跑来跑去呃参加不同的活动，可是我希望我可以有呃很好的时间跟我的家人、跟我的朋友、跟我的呃经纪人啊、呃、这些。然后第二个问题就是呃 ，How to keep your faith fresh 啊、呃。Uh, the most important thing for me is it, you have to practice what you preach, and I think when you do that, um, and if you love people, I think naturally it'll come across in a non-intrusive, uh, fresh way. So just in trying to just be uh, an act out that you know, and I'm gonna make mistakes. I won't be perfect, but. Um, to do that to the best of my ability.